Hello everybody, I'm Jessica Henry Gray and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is a painting that I did while in France of the lavender fields and I'm so excited to share this one with you. Painting the lavender fields in France, I, I can't say that I've ever done a plein air painting when I've been so happy, just so content. So I hope that that comes through in this video. And uh, it's, it's a little bit longer, but I filled it with a lot of information that I think you're going to find useful. And be sure if you did find anything useful in this video that you give it a like and subscribe. I really do appreciate that. Of course, I always love your comments. Um, and be sure to check out the links below. I have a workshop next year in France. Same exact thing. So if you want to be a part of that, check out the link below. It is filling really quickly. I also have another workshop closer to home um, in Massachusetts. I will be in Norton, Massachusetts in October for a weekend. 13th to the 15th and that also is starting to fill but there will be information on that below and it's a plein air workshop so stay tuned to the end of this video I think you're going to like what you see we have got a short uh, presentation of my workshops in France I wanted to show you how beautiful it is if anything just so you could appreciate the beauty of southern France and so check that out and I will see you on the other side of this intro Welcome to my YouTube channel. My channel primarily focuses on plein air painting. I focus on painting in a manner that teaches you the basics of plein air painting with efficiency, composition, and basically getting out and having a good time. Enjoy my videos and let's get out there and paint something beautiful. As we were editing this video, we noticed how the clouds moved across the sky and changed the color and the lighting on the field drastically. <laughs> and so I, I just wanted to show you that here real quick, just to demonstrate how important it is to concentrate on efficiency in your painting. Not to be in a hurry, but to be aware that the sky will change the color and values of your surrounding drastically. Just pulling the canvas, but I'm going to do like a light green. Maybe less up in the sky. So just gonna sketch it out on here. So I'm not that interested in the sky. There's some of those distant hills over there. I know that that goes down. I like this bush right here, kind of setting things back, or tree, whatever. But I don't like that this bush, this third one in, is right in line with the horizon. Yeah. So maybe I'll make that a cypress or something. Or just keep it about like that. this hill with some of these. So I'm just laying in the landscape first so that I can map out everything around that. I'm just using a mixture of phthalo green, ultramarine blue, a little bit of alizarin to block in the foundation. So the blue and brown gives you a nice strong dark. <clears throat> and then I've got this entire passage then to work in the composition of these lines, essentially. And I might include some of the grass 
in front of us just to give it some parameters. But this slope here, I'm just gonna make an indication of it on here so that the, the consistency of this topography is explained there. Just like that, and then I know that these lines are gonna go this way and they blur into purple back there. And then there's just a lighter streak in here indicating it, a turn in the hill and then these are all going to come at us like this so I, that's why I, th I thought that this over here was just a lot more compositionally intriguing because you've got all of this play with things going this way and that back there and then this sloping, and then these provide a stop that way. So, and then you also have more greens and some of these reds, which are gonna complement some of these purples. Those yellows in the hill, working with the purple here. This is a white umbrella giving me this lighter shadow. got all of alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue with some white. Let's just see where we are. Okay, that's a nice dark purple. So I can put that in where I see a dark accent. Which, there's a few. Not many. But maybe a little more white. And some yellow ochre then will give you a really nice lavender color. But I do paint the, the actual lavender rose themselves in um, sort of a layer. I start with the greenish and then I work up to uh, the final color of purple, which there's not a lot of green as a base in there. So I'll just sort of block in some of that as a color note before the sun or anything changes still too dark. That's better. And then I also have that right as it slopes and goes down right in here. That indicates that turn. This one is more like that and this is more extreme. Okay, so those are some color notes to get going. Okay, so I'm gonna block into some of that sky to get it in place. I stand here that my hat makes a shadow. Almost looks like some rain or some darker atmosphere over there. A little bit of ultra rain and a tiny bit of sienna to neutralize that, make it a bit grayish. Too too much. You'll notice a lot of insects in this video. That is part of plein air painting, and especially this lavender draws a lot of bug life. <laughs> the best way to deal with insects when you're out plein air painting is really just to ignore them. Um, they, especially these honeybees, were just about doing their business. I don't want to go too dark with it though, because I'm seeing a lot of, a lot more light in that sky than what I have.
And this is a piece of linen taped to a masonite panel, 11 by 14. glue to that just to indicate some of the base of some of these clouds as they go when I paint clouds I give them a base first and then I build up the form of the cloud around that I'm holding the brush horizontally to give the effect of clouds moving across the sky. The direction of your brush stroke is going to define the form of what you're painting. And then I'm gonna just put some bluish purple off in those distant hills back there. And I wanna make that line where the hill connects with the sky just a little bit softer. I don't, I don't wanna make it a very sharp edge. I've got the phthalo green and some of that yellow. Let's see, how's that? I'm just tone that down just a tiny bit. And I can tone that down with a little bit of yellow ochre and white into that mixture. use some of that anyway because I've got that sort of that dead grass down there. Some of that cad yellow medium, yellow ochre and white to get that dead grass color. of this where it meets these trees with some of that brighter green in there okay now before I get too far up this way I'll go back and do that background back there ultramarine blue burnt sienna some white or some yellow
there's about an infinite number of shades of green you can get with these few um, colors on your palette. You don't just use green, but a little bit of phthalo green, a little bit of ultramarine blue, varying shades of yellow, a little addition of white or burnt sienna can change just a bit of the green one way or another. I like this darker sort of accent as this hill goes down because it accentuates the slope of the land over there. Just blocking sort of a general where these trees are gonna go. That's a little bit of the cadmium yellow with some yellow ochre into that bluish mixture. A little bit of white can cool down, um, take some of the intense chrome out of something. And so I will use white for that purpose to just uh, knock down the intensity of the color if I want it to have a sense of coolness going back. As these trees go back in the distance, I want to make sure to just consciously remember to add a little white as they recede. I always say that white in the hands of an artist is like water in the hands of a chef. It's so basic, but to learn how to use it with <clears throat> a very delicate touch is very important. It can do amazing things for you. I think I still want some more burnt sienna in that hill, just a little bit. And it just warms it up. Gives it a nice difference than everything else. Oh, and it's overcast. Then you can see what, what you're actually doing. <laughs> that helped. It needed just a bit more impact back there with that lighter value. Okay, so I think I'm satisfied with where that background is going. 
I'll just get some of those over off to the side here. It was a nice stroke of luck that that distant patch of trees were, was very light in value because I don't like to have strong contrast going off the edge of a canvas. So having that a lighter value connected it to the sky and didn't draw the eye directly off the canvas back there. I could have made it do that, but it was really nice that the sun came out and just sort of did that for me. I think there was a cloud passing over earlier. Now, before I start getting in the purple, I want to map out some of where the greens are for the, um, in between the rows. I'm squinting down at them just to get sort of that color that I see in general. So if I start over here. Start with this row right here. So there's green. And then as it comes closer, it gets richer, of course. Okay. So it's really just kind of marking these rows where they are. So there's that one with the yellow flowers. And this one is barely there. And then that one. Okay, so then the one right in front of me. And that is ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, and some cadmium yellow, medium. It goes off like that. Don't be afraid to use enough paint. Get a bunch on your palette.
in the foreground where the grass is darkest next to the viewer here, I have it going from darkish on the right hand side, fading to a lighter sunnier on the left side, just to show some movement of light. So over here, I just wanna pop a little more sunlight into that passage so that there's more of a movement. So I'll just take and, well, look this brush, I'll build up a little bit under the lavender. Just a nice dark, let's see, let's start with this one. Ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Some of the green, but just a darker color. I'm suggesting the form of the rose by using a little bit of the green that I'm picking up with my brush from the grass in the middle. Because when you're standing there and you can look at the rose, you can see some of the green flowing up into the I call them purple caterpillars, <laughs> the form, how it comes around. Some darker accents over here. I think I need to make that a little wider here. Are in crimson. And I don't paint them together in equal pot, like just mix it all up. I'll paint them together and see where I am with um, the ratio. So I'll put some of this white down here. So we'll see. How that is for I'm gonna start with one. Okay, it's kind of dark. So I'm just gonna block it in now. I can always come back through with adding more texture and layers. But I always let my brush stroke define the form of the row. And I'm thinking about the colors getting richer up close, more vibrant. That's alizarin permanent ultramarine blue. Less of the white and yellow ochre up close. So a little more of the ultramarine blue and alizarin permanent with just a little white to bring some life into it. White's like salt, it brings out the flavor. If we go further back, it looks like back over here, there's more green in these purple rows, which is nice because compositionally, it just lets them fade off. Continue blocking. So I'm looking at where the ends of the rows end. Do they end in a line or not really? These 
drop down quite a bit more than what I have. And I like that. I think it adds a lot by making them sort of drop down there. So we'll do that. And then they climb up that way. You can see how the brushwork gives form to these rows that really helps a lot and does a lot to explain what we're looking at. the sides of these I'm seeing more of this green which I can pull up into it I'm making the purple a little bit more vibrant than what I see because I know that I'm going to scumble over the top a softer more muted purple up and around this hill it's the purple rows that are defining this turn of the landscape here and then it gets that light streak that I mentioned You can see in these rows up close how these sort of purple caterpillars are made up of little clumps, little clumps all the way down. These rows back here I'll just define as these lines. When I squint down at that whole passage back there of purple, right in the middle, it's a little darker in here where the lines, the rows have more separation. But everything else is more united. But I'm still gonna let my brush stroke define the, the topography.
the image that you're seeing off to the side is a separate shot. When the clouds come over and shade the area, the, the variety of the cool and warmness of the colors changed a lot. Uh, I did, when this painting was all done, I did add a little bit more of a um, warmer a violet purple to the rose of lavender. And you'll see in the finished painting that um, I altered that shade just a little bit. I want to be very explicit about these strokes because that's one of the things that drew me to this area is how interesting the flow is like that and then how these rise up to meet it over here. I can come through and clean up in between that mass and to find a bit more of the rose. The perspective from which I, that I was viewing it versus the camera lens is viewing it is a little bit different. So that's why on the painting, it might seem a little off. It's because my eyes were higher than the camera. And then back here, some more of these. So now we can come back through and sort of address some of all this scratchy down here. I think I want to hit these up with just a little more sunshine in here to really show the movement of light. Especially when it's overcast like this, you can see easier. Less white closer to me and more color. You can see the color a little bit easier on overcast days. Okay, so I feel that this needs a few more of the anchoring um, spots, the darker aspects of the foreground here, which will give it more of a 
near and far. So just coming up here to some of that dark blue and brown. I'm gonna tuck in some of these rolls. sienna in the some of the soil here really helps I think just to bring some of the warmth up front Adding the complement of reddish to the green really um, adds some neutralizing effects and makes it appear a little bit more believable. Okay, it's more over here. Having the accent um, strong right there is a nice entry into the painting, kind of leading you in from that corner to the highlighted parts of the rose and then up and back through the trees and back through the back of the uh, lavender field. Compositionally, that was uh, a nice thing to happen with the darks being right there. some really bright purple, ultramarine blue, blizzard. And then I just want to sort of accentuate some of it, the rose back here just a little bit more. Just with the highlights on top.
At this point in the process, I am sort of adding all the finishing touches and I'm adding some of the up close detailed information Cadmium yellow and some white will sort of tone down the intensity of a cadmium. All right, everybody. Well, that wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it and be sure to check out the links. Um, and I always enjoy your likes and comments and subscribes. 
Um, and if you have any questions about the workshop, if you want any information on France, send me an email. All of that is down below. And um, I will be happy to get back to you with some information on that, as well as the um, specify what workshop you'd be interested in information on, whether it's the Massachusetts one or France. All right, you guys, I will see you next time. I hope you enjoyed this video. All right, bye-bye, happy painting. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this little informative video about the workshops that I teach in France. Now, these workshops are located at Frasinet, France, which is about five or six hours south of Paris. Um, in the Toulouse area. So this is, uh, it's placed in a 17th century convent and you can see it there in the background. And all over the grounds are these beautiful gardens with tucked away hiding spots and little picnic tables. And there's two swimming pools. And um, it's just absolutely beautiful on site. And we do spend some, t some days painting on the grounds. Down in this little cove down in here is a medieval um, section of this area too. And so you are able to walk around this entire property and just find a special little nook. And it is just a wonderful, um, peaceful, very, very quiet uh, place to relax. So this is um, the on-site location. We spend some days here and then we spend some days out and about. It is a 10 day workshop. And uh, my next one coming up is in 2024, uh, June 3rd to the 13th. And so we are going back. I have about seven spots left to fill uh, to make the workshop full. So if you are interested, and these look really interesting to you, uh, just send me an email and I'll put all of that information below. Um, so I'm just gonna show you a little bit more of the grounds here as I was walking around. Frasinet is a tiny little village. There are no stores or anything. It's just a little village where people live. This is the studio and it's air conditioned, well lit, it's beautiful. This is the workbook that I make for the students that take my workshops. It has some essentials that they'll need for the week and um, just bits of information usually having to do with some of the places that we go or basics of plein air. I do demonstrations every day. This was one that we did. And this is another demo. These are students working around the property. Gorgeous flowers, always something blooming. And there are a few friendly cats who live outdoors. And when the weather's bad or uncooperative, I do a still life demo or portrait, whatever their interest is. Oh, the places you'll go. <laughs> now, this is a sampling of some of the places that we go to. And we went to this place not to paint, but just to enjoy the outdoor market. And uh, this wonderful musicians, just the overall life, vitality, energy of this place, and shopping. The finest wines in the world are in this region in southern France, and they were selling for five uh, euros and 90 cents, about six dollars <laughs> for a bottle of wine. And you can check them in your suitcase to bring them back home. And I got myself some cheese, it was absolutely beautiful. We went to Beaumont, uh, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce some of these, uh, but medieval villages. And um, we did set up here to paint, I did a demo. And then in the afternoon, everyone 
sort of dispersed and painted scenes from around the area that they liked. And it's really, I mean, just a few minutes walking in between everybody. It wasn't a very big area. With charming shops, this I thought was the most beautiful little shop. And medieval looking walls, and gorgeous landscape. And these three were painting a clock tower area. And that's the demo from that day. Then we went to Sarlat. And some of these pictures that I have on here are from last year and the year we just went. So there's lots of shopping in Sarlat. It's a medieval village. They've filmed lots of movies in this little town. I did paint a demo, but it was pouring rain the entire time, and that's the demo. But it was a unique experience. Collange La Rouge. This is my favorite little village. And uh, everything, all of the stone is in some shade of red because of the granite in the area. And it's, it's almost like a quiet little town. I think a hundred people live there and you can just walk right in the streets and um, anywhere, anywhere you look is a beautiful painting. And there's charming shops. There's plenty of time for shopping in this workshop. Um, I do enjoy giving a demo and you can watch the demo and um, some people just paint. Here's one of my demos from that day. So Collange La Rouge. Now a couple of these here, and I'm not sure, Gignac or whatever, that we, we found a flea market. It happened to be um, running that morning in Dome. We went uh, one of the years to a restaurant there and these friendly cows were there right across the street. I love that life is just right where you are in southern France. It's open, it's rustic, it's friendly, it's unpretentious. Bainac. So we are at the top of the Dordogne Valley. Um, that's the Dordogne River and the valley down below. And right over here is Bainac Castle. And it just looks like a Disney castle. It's absolutely beautiful. And that is the view from down below, down by the Dordogne River one year. We painted down there, and that was my demo from that year. And they bring a picnic lunch on that day, and it's just relaxing and peaceful. This uh, was a shot that one of the students got from way up above. That was my demo. Les Jardins du Do. Anyway, the flower gardens, <laughs> the water lilies. This was a park we went to, first time we went to it was this year, and we everybody had a ball. It was like painting in Monet's water lily garden. And it just set up, and look at that gorgeous bridge. It's very similar to Monet's. And let me tell you, the water lilies, this is a small sampling of the flowers all over the place. Stunning, gorgeous flowers. And again, we had a delightful picnic lunch. And this was my demo from that day. Now, in a single workshop, we don't go to all of these places, but this is a sampling of the ones that we have gone to over the last few years. Now, this is the Lavender Fields, and we will go to this every year, if I have any say so. And uh, it is absolutely breathtaking. And there's this hum in the air of the honeybees working on the flowers, the scent, I, I can't even begin to describe. It just, the air is just, full of a peaceful, everybody leaves there peaceful. This was my demo from that day. And they provide some things that you can buy that I have purchased and absolutely love their product. There's the finished demo. And Rock Madur. This is a fascinating medieval town built high on a hill, just right out of the rock on the side. We went to the very top last, this last summer and I painted this clock tower from way up high and it was a really incredible angle just looking down at the whole valley down below next year we'll be off that way way up over there looking at the whole village as it cascades down the hill and then um, so this is the village as it wraps around the streets my daughter 
contributed a few videos. Walking in some of the streets. It felt like we were in Gondor, Lord of the Rings. Massive doors. I don't even know how old this place is, but there's many stairs going down, but you can take a, a lift, a chair lift going all the way back up. And that was my demo from that day. San Cirque, La Pope. This was a town that we went to and it also kind of built up on a hill in the Dordogne Valley. All the roofs are just these gorgeous terracotta tiles and you can wander around in the streets. You can't even get lost. It's just, there's shops everywhere, wonderful places to eat. We, I did a watercolor demo and then uh, an oil painting demo also on that day. Cahor. We usually go to Cahor about on the first day uh, because there is a store, an art store in the town. And that is Cahor itself. And we did after the workshop, we went above the town and looked down below. There's a very famous bridge called the Devil's Bridge. Uh, Monet actually painted this bridge and I saw it in his home. There's a marketplace and that is one of the reasons we go right away because it, look at this, he could spend all day there. Now, we did go one year to this cave, and we probably wouldn't go back but uh, because the, f the ground is so uneven and difficult to walk, but there were 30,000-year-old cave drawings in this cave. And we, of course, I couldn't get pictures of those, but we got to draw them on our paper just a little bit. Full of stalactites, stalagmites. And then back at Frasine. This town is absolutely the most adorable charming, peaceful town. Every evening and every morning, some of the students would go for walks around the whole village and just enjoy just the quietness of it. And there's people out just working, doing their daily life. We took a spot on the side of the road and painted this valley looking over and beyond. That is Le Vieux Cavan, looking into the kitchen area. Now, we're about to get to the best part. <laughs> There's gourmet food at every meal that we had. I'm telling you, it's actually gourmet. <laughs> and um, everything, they catered to everybody's varying dietary. There's gluten-free, there's vegetarian, vegan, whatever. Um, they have the cheese course, they have the desserts, they have the main course. Breakfast are warm, flaky, fresh croissants and local wines that is from Cahor. Rich, delicious. There's a pear in a bottle that grew there and then they put the alcohol in it. Um, fresh vegetables, everything is as local and perfectly organic as you can get it. These desserts are like a work of art. Every evening before dinner, we all collect and they bring together wine and refreshments just to sort of regroup and refresh before dinner. It's very nice. That is Le View, and this was my walk in the morning. And that is, we walk through that green door into Le View. And this is the group, last year. And uh, this is, you can see here on the map with France, we're way down in the south. Ten nights lodging, daily breakfast, gourmet dinners, transportation, taking care. Once you get to the airport, you are taken care of. And 24-hour um, studio you can use. These workshops fill up very quickly. So if this sounds like something that would work for you, send me your email and I will get some information out to you. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next year. Au revoir.